What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today once again we're going to be discussing a couple of Destiny 2 topics, wanted to mention a small update coming soon, some hidden stuff in the big update with the DLC and also wanted to mention the old exotics and the expansion, faction rally and some other things as well so quite a variety of things I thought were definitely worth being aware of. So let's begin with a very small update happening actually tomorrow for Destiny 2 on the PC platform. I know a lot of you over there will be very happy to see this, but this is going to be hotfix number 1.0.6.2, and this is going to fix that frame rate stuttering issue. It was actually introduced in the latest hotfix, which tried to fix a different thing. So that was actually kind of fixed, but it wasn't fully. But now the small update happening tomorrow should completely fix it. And then hopefully there should be no more stuttering or frame issues on the PC platform. So next up, we're going to talk about one of the changes happening in the big update alongside the Osiris DLC and of course launch of Season 2. So Bungie actually snuck this in the trailer or the PvP gameplay for the expansion and you'd only notice this if you were paying close attention, but this is actually a buff for the Golden Gun subclass, specifically the top 6 shooter tree. So this is obviously one of the most least used subclass in the entire game, definitely in need of a buff and compared to the bottom option, there's little reason to use it. But if you look at this footage, you can see the duration has definitely increased. So either killing enemies makes it drain slower now, or it just drains slower normally all the time, or maybe a bit of both. We don't have the patch notes, just the footage. But the bottom line is that with this huge update going live with the expansion, the six shooter is going to last a bit longer now, which is nice to see. Now, obviously, as we know, these updates are going to be very big. These quarterly sandbox updates that happen with every season, it's definitely going to contain quite a lot of buffs and nerfs, hopefully more buffs than nerfs, but it's going to change quite a lot and obviously begs the question, what else has been changed? So I'm assuming this won't be the only subclass that's been buffed or nerfed. There are probably some that have been snuck in the trailer as well, but for right now, the only thing we know for sure is the six shooter. Now, in terms of my own personal opinion on the six shooter tree, I've always been a bit confused by it. I don't really think it has that much of a place the way Destiny 2 was made. I mean, having that insanely high precision damage and the multiplier on that bottom tree is pretty much the obvious choice for PvE. No one's going to pop the six shot golden gun to take out some dregs. So if you do use it, you're always going to use it on majors, bosses. And in that case, the bottom tree is always going to be the best choice. In Crucible, is definitely where it's designed for. That's the purpose of this six shot. But again, the bottom tree is still more viable because it's a bit more risky to go for the six shot. And especially with the option to take out supers or people in a rift or anything with lots of health, it's always nice to have the option to be more accurate and get a headshot for a guaranteed one shot kill. So I think they do need to retool the six shot a bit more. I'd love to see the six shot be the main choice for Crucible and the three shot be for PvE, which is definitely Bungie's intention when designing it. I mean, pretty much all the Destiny 2 subclasses, you can tell one of them was designed for Crucible, the other one for PvE, although it doesn't always work out like that. So I'm hoping this buff is a bit more than just slightly increasing the time of that golden gun shot. I'm hoping there's a bit more to it to make it even more viable. But of course, comment down below which other changes would you like to see in terms of subclass balances, buffs or nerfs. I mean, two things off the top of my head just for the Hunter alone. The Night Stalker Tether definitely needs to be a one-shot kill in the Cruise Ball, and the Arc Strider Super could definitely move a bit faster. But I think those are very simple changes for Bungie to do. But let me know which things you'd like to see buffed in subclasses. Obviously, the Golden Gun isn't going to be the only thing they buff, considering how large this update is going to be. Now, in terms of other things inside this gameplay, which you can tell is from the update, there is also some new Faction Rally gear, which is kind of previewed briefly in the Seasons livestream. You can see the brand new Dead Orbit Lunar Fusion Rifle, also the Season 2 Future Warcult armor sets for the Hunter. So, of course, this Faction Rally that's going to be happening all of this week, that's going to be the last time to get that armor set. But this armor set you can see for the Hunter, and also, of course, this Lunar Fusion Rifle is going to be Season 2 new stuff, essentially. Now, something else pretty cool inside here is this shotgun with the Rampage perk. So kills, of course, give you a quick buff to bonus damage. I don't think any legendary shotguns have Rampage right now. It's a pretty rare perk on shotguns. So it's going to be pretty nice to have this for mobs of enemies or just cruise sport in general for guaranteed one-shot kills. Same reason the main ingredient is really good as a fusion rifle. This shotgun could be as well. So moving on to the next topic, one of the biggest questions right now about this DLC besides is there a raid is about this weapon being held right here by the hunter in this shot of the trailer. So this weapon does look a bit similar to the Thorn hand cannon from Destiny 1. This was one of the most famous hand cannons in pretty much all Destiny history and also one of the most hated for a long time as well. It started out awful when Destiny launched and then they buffed it to make it crazily good. You could just two shot people and let them burn to death and they nerfed it back down again. It was also only obtained through this special exotic quest, making it very unique and also probably the best lore of any exotic weapon we've ever had. So it's a very famous weapon, definitely up there with the G-Horn. So obviously there is a lot of motive for Bungie to want to bring it back. So a lot of people have been asking me, do I think it's the Thorn and do I think it's going to come back? I personally don't think so. I don't think it's the Thorn. I think it does look a lot like it, especially from further away. But if you look at a high-res version and zoom in, the shape doesn't really seem to match. It's more squared off with a tiny blade at the bottom or like a little knife. And especially the top and bottom, there's no thorns that you can see on the actual thorns. So I don't think it looks like it. I mean, of course, let me know what you think down below in the comments. But I'm personally leaning towards the side of this not being the thorn. 
Now, on the other hand, an exotic that I do think is a bit more likely to return is going to be this thing, the No Time to Explain Exotic Pulse Rifle. So the big question is, does this belong to that same set of weapons we've seen quite often, or is this an exotic? Now, we can actually see a different pulse rifle in this same set, looking a bit similar to the Prey of this Revenge, the Volta Glass Pulse. So this could be the main pulse, or this could just be the energy weapon, and there's No Time to Explain reskin could be the Kinetic. If that is the case, it will be a bit disappointing because I don't see why they would reskin the model of No Time to Explain. It is a very distinct gun, and there's no doubting this is the exact same model just reskinned so i'm hoping this is an actual exotic and they haven't just reused that model for a legendary pulse rifle that would be a bit disappointing but i could see it going either way all we know right now is that there are definitely two pulse rifles one of them a reskin of an exotic the other one could be the main pulse rifle but again like i pointed out all the exotics returning are actually from the taken king so telesto jade rabbit graviton forfeit they all came in that year two taken king expansion so i think it's a bit more likely that the no time to explain returns than the thorn in my opinion but again let me know what you think of this in the comment section i would personally love to see the no time to explain it was a very underutilized weapon because there were so many at the time but it was a very cool one it's basically a black spindle but a primary pulse rifle so i do hope it comes back but we'll have to see if this is just a reskin or the actual old exotic returning so moving on to the next topic of course faction rally is going to be running all week want to let you guys know about some of the actual perks and stats on some of these weapons to look out for as you pledge because it might help you make a decision like i said before this is going to be the very last faction rally of season one meaning after this you won't be able to get any of this armor or weapons ever again so it's definitely worth knowing what kind of loot rewards are out there and what you're grinding for essentially now something pretty strange is that with dead orbit there appears to be one weapon which is never going to be sold and might never be available ever because this is the sidearm it's actually a tenth weapon as i said before in previous videos Dead Orbit has 10 weapons, whereas New Monarchy and Future War Cult only have 9. So they have one extra weapon, and this is the Controlling Vision Sidearm. So because this is an extra weapon, it isn't actually going to be inside the engrams at least Bungie didn't announce it. Maybe they'll include it as a last minute thing, but so far this weapon isn't set to be released. So if they move on to Season 2, it might never be released. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this thing. It's in the adaptive archetype with Rampage, so it seems decent, but we'll have to see if this weapon ever gets released, because it is an extra 10th weapon essentially. So mentioning the weapons that are actually going to be inside packages, we have the Guiding Star Auto Rifle. This thing is in the Scathe Lock archetype, so it fires pretty fast. It's got moving target, so increased movement speed and target acquisition when moving and aiming down sights. And it's also got high caliber rounds. So as we know, this thing is going to be very, very good. A high firing weapon with also high caliber. Now there's also the Escape Velocity Submachine Gun. Doesn't look too good in my opinion. It's got Grave Robber and it's in the lightweight frame, so not too sure about that one. There's also the Hunted Earth, which of course was winning last time if you didn't grab that. There's also the Contingency Plan, which is a Vice Scout Rifle. Could be pretty decent. It's of course very fast firing, but this one has auto-loading holster. So you stow it away and it reloads after a short period of time. And there's of course the Grenade Launcher as the winning weapon for Dead Orbit with Quick Draw and Lightweight Frame. So moving on to New Monarchy, they've got another Scout Rifle, which is also high impact, which is also in the Kinetic category. So they're doubled up on this type. And like I said before, this one's perk is hip fire, which is something you should never do on a weapon like this. So it's definitely not gonna be a good weapon. There is the older sister, which is the hand cannon. This thing looks pretty nice. It's in the adaptive archetype, so very common, same as better devils. This one has ambitious assassin, so it overflows the magazine based on the number of rapid kills you get before reloading. So basically more ammo. This could be pretty decent for PvE. There's also the Maxim, which is the sniper rifle. Got very solid all-around stats. Going to be pretty decent for Crucible. There's the winning sidearm, which of course didn't win last time, the Interregnum. This one has Snapshot, High Cal, and Sura. So not sure if it's going to be too great, but it seems okay. And then the winning weapon for New Monarchy is, of course, the sword called Honor's Edge. On Guard is the perk Quick Attacks immediately after swapping to the sword does additional damage. So those are the New Monarchy weapons. For Future War Cult, we have another submachine gun, also in the lightweight frame with Tap the Trigger. Seems okay. They also have the sidearm called the Enigma's Jaw, which was actually in the beta called the Needle. It was a very rare drop, but this thing has got Zen Moment, High Cal, and Precision Frame, so it seems pretty decent to be honest. There's also the Grenade Launcher called Memory Interdict with Adaptive Frame and Rampage. There's the Heart of Time Pulse Rifle, which of course was the winning weapon last time, but didn't get sold. The perks on this are Firefly, Steady Rounds for a ton of stability, a short range scope, and Rapid Fire. So it seems okay, it's going to be similar to the Nurgle or the Agenda Pulse Rifles. And the final one is the Timeless Vertex. This is the winning weapon for Future War Cult. And this one a Snapshot and Adaptive Frame. So those are the weapons to look out for this week as you go through Faction Rally. Dead Orbit are going to have a really good Auto Rifle. New Monarchy have a pretty good Sniper and also Hand Cannon. And Future War Cult, the Pulse Rifle and maybe Sidearm. So a lot of good stuff going around. And of course, comment down below who do you think is going to win this Faction Rally and who are you going to be going for? Because of course, Dead Orbit now offer a Grenade Launcher as winning weapon. So it may incentivize it a little bit less, but who knows how this will turn out. 
But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did and want to help support the channel, then a like rating down below would always be much appreciated. There's going to be a ton more videos covering the Curse of Osiris expansion, the update, the changes, Iron Banner, Faction Rally. So stay tuned and make sure you are subscribed. You can, of course, click the image on screen right now to watch another video from me. And I'll see you guys in the next one.